Tom Mackey came to the UK from his native America, where he worked as an industrial photographer, more than 30 years ago. Once here, he began to build up a portfolio of landscape images of the UK and Europe, and started to shoot corporate calendars for the likes of Norwich Union and BT. He still shoots stock images for clients in Germany and America, and runs 8 to 12 photography workshops a year, taking in locations as diverse as Norway's Lofoten Islands and the Italian Dolomites, with plans to go to New Zealand in 2017. I visited him in his home in Norwich to talk about three of his prints. Hi Tom, thank you for inviting us today. Well, thanks for coming. Um, we're going to be talking about three of your pictures and we're starting off with this one which I believe was taken in New Zealand um, and I think it was the first time it's you've first been time to New been, Zealand yeah. and I think it kind of makes maybe an interesting point about landscape photography today perhaps not being the kind of solitary pursuit maybe yeah. it once was. New Zealand really brought that home too because you know it's all about uh, why wild landscapes there and you think you're there on your own yeah. uh, being a solitary profession uh, it's not that way anymore. So I had a group of people, uh, other photographers, just right down in front of me. Right. And I couldn't really get the, the composition I wanted, so I extended the tripod leg above everyone, uh -huh. and, which was great, because they all looked at this and thought, wow, I've got to get one of these tripods. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But I was mentioning before that um, I have to try to get a lot of different orientations out of a landscape. So when I'm thinking uh, about composition, I think, okay, panoramic, I love doing the wide scenes, but also verticals, horizontals, intimate details, just on the tree. Mm. Um, but with this scene, I really love this sweeping uh, coastline with the poplars. Yeah. It complements the tree. Yeah. Well, you've always got a circle yeah. of yellow happening, haven't you? Because you've got the finer detail of the leaves the here, leaves. Mm -hmm. comes around to the trees, the little island, and then the main subject, haven't you? That's right. And, and just having, waiting for things to happen, like this cloud, you know, just drifting in over the tree, and positioning the tree just in between the, uh, the V shape of the mountains yeah. uh, was crucial. On this occasion, I was there pre-dawn, uh, doing some shots with the mist uh, that picked up some color. Mm. And then once uh, the sun like, hit these trees, it all came alive. Mm. And then you get that really strong color contrast between the yellows and the blues. Yeah. That's what I was after. So when it came to the more technical aspects of the, the picture, I mean, you've got quite an even light there, haven't you? So presumably metering is reasonably straightforward. Yeah. The metering was straightforward. It was the filtration that was, uh, uh, obviously, I'm using a polarizing filter. Mm. Uh, that gives you that strong contrast between the yellows and the blues, and it darkens the sky down. But as far as um, the sky, I used um, a two-stop grad just coming down over the sky, just above the tree, right. just to bring this tone up in the, in the foreground. Yeah. And then... Uh, was that a hard grad? Uh, that was a hard grad, yeah. And why would you have used a hard grad as opposed to a soft one here? The, the two-stop soft grad doesn't give you enough bite uh -huh. uh, in this situation. So the hard grad will actually bring this tone up in the foreground and just darken the sky down a little bit. Yeah. Um, but then also a little stopper. And the little right. stopper was, was essential to smooth out the reflections. Yeah. Big yeah. stopper would have been too long. Yes. Yeah. And so roughly how many seconds was this exposure then with the little stopper on? It was probably about 10 seconds. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but um, I'm really pleased with the way it's turned out. The next print, I believe, was shot in Tuscany. And is this one of these locations you've just been back to many times? Yeah, I keep going. I take my groups back there every year. But I like to find locations that are a little bit out of the way, quieter, no groups. Yeah. Uh, and so far, yeah, every time I've been to this location, there's been no one there You've except for us. Managed to keep us. it a secret. Yes. <laughs> um, and it's just a beautiful, simple composition. Yeah. Um, you know, little tree on the hill uh, with the sunset over the valley, and I think the crucial thing here is this line, yeah. the path going through the wheat field, right up to the tree. And you have to have clouds. And this particular evening, we had beautiful skies. Mm. 
Um, Do you see those skies building up over the previous couple of hours? Yeah, you, you can kind of tell whether it's going to be a good sunset. Yeah. You think, okay, these are the right clouds. These are really light. There's some dark clouds in there. This could be potentially good. So we need to be in position and just wait. Yes. Yeah. So. And so are you, you're waiting for everything really, aren't you? Because you're waiting for the right light coming up on the underside of the clouds, the right shapes, but also presumably for the sun to be in the right position too as it's setting. That's right, because you can see the sun's just going into the clouds yeah. here. And so I'm waiting for that to happen. So then you get this little tiny uh, flare coming out from the bottom of the sun. And that will light up the underneath side of the clouds as well. So you're waiting for the clouds to drift into the right position and hopefully everything comes together at once. Yes. Uh, and then as far as filtering goes, it's, um, this is a difficult one because you've got an irregular horizon line. And yeah. you know, horizon coming in here, but then this slopes down. Um, and I wanted to bring the tone of the, the wheat up. Yeah. Uh, I like really um, uh, detailed foregrounds. Yeah, and I don't it needs like to feel to go... quite light and airy. That's right, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I used um, uh, a grad kind of angled uh, across here. Yeah. And uh, just skirting the top of the just tree. Just skirting the top of the tree. Yeah. Yeah. And what sort of strength would that one have been? That was a 0.9, okay. three stop. Right, yeah. so quite strong then. And when you use a 0 0.9, it brings your, your clouds down quite a bit. And I like that drama, uh, uh, keeping the, the whole um, viewpoint centered within the, yes. the uh, composition. Yeah. And often I'll overexpose, I generally overexpose by two thirds of a stop anyway. Oh, okay. Just to lift the shadows and always checking the histogram, making sure that it's not going too far to the left, yeah. I'll expose as much as to the right as possible. So I can actually bring up any detail in, in the dark areas. Yeah, fantastic. This next picture, I believe, was shot in Provence. That's right, yeah. And I think what we've got here is an example of a picture that pretty much would be impossible to shoot without a, a filter, would that be fair to say? Pretty much. I like to get everything uh, in one shot in the camera whenever possible. I used a really dramatic uh, grad filter on this, a four stop. And the reason I used that is because I wanted to keep the exposure dark on the, the sky, but I wanted to lift the sunflower fields. I wanted to yeah. keep that light and airy. Yeah. So I'm shooting at F8 on this, but you have shallow depth of field. Yeah. Everything's gotta be sharp throughout on this. So I did a focus stack. Yeah. Uh, focusing here in the foreground and then going right through the scene at different focus points, yeah. right to infinity. And then uh, combining those in Photoshop. Yeah. And with the, the composition of this image, it is, you know, a fairly wide angle scene, actually. But I think the temptation can be when faced with something like this is to just look at the drama of it and not necessarily think about actually your, your, your composition. But you've got some subtle hints here that it's really considered, haven't you? Because you do have this subtle line That's right, coming yeah. through, don't you? When you look at an image, at a composition, uh, you, you take all the details and discard those, and you're left with line. Yeah. And this is your primary structure of any composition. So if uh, you know, you've got this horizon line obviously coming through here, and you, you notice I've kind of split this in half. Yeah. So I chose uh, to, to give it equal measure. Yeah. But that subtle line draws your eye in. Yeah. And it's, it's probably not apparent to people when they're looking at the image. Mm. But, you know, because it's very, very subtle, your eye tends to just come in from the corner yeah. and draw your eye right into the sunset. Exactly. And you've even got the little full stop of the one closed yeah. up sunflower that's in the right. corner. Yeah. Well, that's been really interesting to, to talk to you about these three pictures, all quite different in yeah. their setup and the approach mm -hmm. and that kind of thing, just to learn a bit more about how landscape photography is working for you today. So thanks very much indeed. Well, thanks for coming.